Let's bow down our heads and let's ask for God's blessing upon the word this morning. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for we know that we are in your presence. And we thank you, God, for the freedom that we have in you. We thank you because this morning you are releasing those who are in bondage in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because you look upon your people. You, looked up into, you look up into their hearts. You have seen the deepest need and we thank you because we have the confidence that today your Holy Spirit is going to work in our hearts. You would release those who are in bondage. You would release those who are in trouble, those who are worried, those who are uh, insecure. You are going to establish them this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for we are in your presence. You are with us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for starting to minister upon our hearts. As your word will go forth, I pray that your anointing, O Lord God, will rest upon your servant. Hide me behind the cross. I pray that the Holy Spirit, O Lord, will carry your word to each and everyone this morning. And they will receive your word with gladness in their hearts. We want to give you all the praise and the honor. For you alone is worthy in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's try if I can do this. Okay. There we go. This morning, I will be talking to you about God's desire and intention for His children. And this is about you and I as overcomers. How many of you wants to be an overcomer? Oh, praise God. Thank you for those few ones. How about the rest of us? Do we want to be an overcomer? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You know, God wants you to be people who have the heart of an overcomer. Now, why? It's because overcomers never give up. They take hold of opportunities to fight, to win, and to overcome. Amen. God has new territories, communities for you to take. God has new victories for you to win in places when you experience, where you experience defeat. Places where you have not experience fruitfulness. He wants to develop in you the heart of an overcomer so that he can take you higher and higher from glory to glory. Amen. He wants to work in you and through you and move you into the place he designed for you to be. Are you excited? Amen. I can see excite I can see excitement in your faces. <laughs> Are you excited? Yeah. Hallelujah. No? I would like to look at the life of Joshua because the life of Joshua was a living picture of how God moved him from glory to glory into a life that God wanted him to be. And Joshua had lived with a heart of an overcomer. If you look and read the book of Joshua, you will see how God led him, how God encouraged him to lead the people of Israel into the promised land. And so he was appointed by God to lead his people into the promised land. However, I would like us to look at this life's principle because whatever happens to Joshua is going to, ha to, deter to determine what happens to the people. Whatever happens to Joshua is going 
to determine what happens to the people. Now look at this principle deeper because it is very important for all of us even today. What I am saying here is that parents, whatever happens to you is going to determine what happens to your children. Students, whatever happens to you in your dormitory or in your apartment determines what happens to the students around you. If you live a strong Christian life, it has an effect on others. If you live a weak Christian life, it has an effect on others too. So if you are strong for God in your workplace, if you are living for God, if you have the heart of an overcoming, God will use you to transform lives of people. Amen. You know, God will empower you. He will give you wisdom. He will open doors for you. He will even knock down walls for you if it's necessary. For you to win new territory, to transform people, and He will supply or empower you whatever things you need in this area to be an overcomer. So whatever happens to you is going to determine what happens to the people around you. Do you believe that? We need overcomers in the work of God. We need people who have the heart of an overcomer in every aspect of the church ministry. We need overcomers in our life groups, in our discipleship endeavors, in our prayer ministry, in our youth ministry, in our evangelistic efforts. We need overcomers in every ministry that will be a channel for transformation, a live witness for God's power to change lives in the community He places us. See, when you look at the needs around your community, you will find many. There are people who are bound by substance abuse. There are people who are lonely and needy, who needs encouragement. People who are broken in their relationship, divorced, victims of domestic violence, broken homes, abandoned, unloved, sick people and people in poverty who will you will see them around you there are problems everywhere wherever you are located and it is epidemic it is epidemic just observe around your communities just observe all over fresno if you are watching news every day just look at those news there are no good news there are all bad news Right? So if we want these things change, if we want our society change, it will be possible only when we have people who loves the Lord that has a heart of an overcomer. Hallelujah. People who are bold for Jesus. People who are dedicated to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ in this generation. People who give time to prayer. Praying for your neighbors and office mates, co-workers or friends in need. Understand this. I am talking this morning ab not about pastors or church leaders. But people, believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. People just like you and me, all believers who live were changed by the resurrected power of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has called us to be an overcomer. God has settled you in these places in your communities where pastors and church leaders are not there. God has given you territories that you can be His hand, His feet, His mouth to declare His glory 
and speak his truth so that lives will be transformed. Hallelujah. You will be in places that the pastors cannot be. You have your own audiences. Talk to them. Never underestimate nor undervalue the size of your audience. Because when God uses you, just change one life at a time and you will change a whole lot of people along with that one life. Amen. <coughs> I heard testimonies. I know people who meet people in their workplaces. And some way God uses them and they, they, they share the word of God and the word of God brings conviction to their hearts. Just one person. And then they did not know that one person is a very contagious person. He talks a lot. Sometimes talking a lot becomes weakness. But at this moment, talking a lot becomes a positive thing for this person. Why? Because everywhere he goes, because of his love that he, he has received from the Lord, he goes around his friends, his co-workers, and share the word of God. And look what happened after a year. He got six people inside the church. Isn't it wonderful? And everybody is silent. This is what God wants each one of us. Each believer who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You are an influence to your own workplace. You have your own audience and God can use you to transform lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Ministering to people is a part of the spirit-filled life. Praying for people is part of the early church life. Isn't it? When you read the book of Acts, no, you will find out that these believers went from house to house and pray, breaking bread, fellowshipping, prayed for the sick, and they recovered. They were not waiting for another seven days to come and meet together again in worship and minister to the needy. They were ministering every day. And the scripture says, and the Lord, what? Added to their number day by day those who were being saved. They were all over ministering to people, praying for people. They were used every day by the Lord to minister to people. Now, what are we seeing here? I am seeing big things that is about to happen in this church. We have big dreams for all of us in this church. The leadership. When we have the heart of an overcomer, we are seeing a coming revival. Do you believe that? We are seeing hundreds of lives being changed by the power of God. We are seeing our communities changed by the power of God. We are seeing sick people healed. We are seeing substance abuse people miraculously changed in the city, in our own community. You may ask, well, pastor, I wanted to see it first before I believe it. Let me encourage you with his words. When we embrace the heart of God, his compassionate heart, and we know that he is with us, and he will go before us, just watch. Because the Lord will bring it to pass. Amen. The Lord will bring it to pass. I believe that the Lord has wonderful things to be done here on holy ground. And if you are going to believe with me, then let's go and it will come to pass. Amen. Amen. 
Can somebody shout amen here? Amen. Hallelujah! <laughs> Why I am seeing or saying this? No people, I believe that we as a group of people, we have the heart of an overcomer. We have the heart and of an overcomer. And I want you to believe that even within yourself. You have a heart of an overcomer. Amen. I am a believer of the heart to see victory over this community, over this workplace, over their families. I am seeing you seated before me in the sanctuary. The majority of you have the heart of an overcomer and you are ready to engage the work of God has placed in your heart. Hallelujah. You want to see something more that God will do through you? I believe these things will happen. And the Lord will go before us. So believe with us. Recently, you know, just to give an illustration of how, you know, people here really have that heart of an overcomer. The recent VBS just finished. And I was, he I I was here every day. And I saw how our volunteers work, our young people, you know, when they teach the children, they teach with enthusiasm. They teach with life. The volunteers, even those who are in the kitchen to prepare the food, they are very enthusiastic, not to eat, but to serve. <laughs> See? Look around us. Sometimes we don't recognize these things, but these are people who have a heart of an overcomer. Amen. How much more when I look at you know our, our men's ministry? <coughs> Thank you for the leaders. I know that you have the heart of an overcomer. Why? Because they would like all men to have the fellowship even twice a week. And the scripture says that do not neglect the fellowship with one another. Spar one another in fellowship and in the word. Hallelujah. And I'm praying that it will reach even to other ministries. Amen. 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 Do you believe that God is here with us? Amen. Do you believe that God is before us? Amen. Do you believe that God is going to perform things, even things that we have not experienced before? Because he is creating a heart of overcomers, and you are that overcomers. Amen. Hallelujah. We will look at the book of Joshua and discover some aspects that the heart of an overcomer has. And I want us to look into some of them. The number one is strength. Strength. An overcomer has got to be strong. How many of you believe that? An overcomer has got to be strong. If you are not strong, you will fall right away. Right? People will not follow you. Why? You are weak. So, an overcomer has got to be strong. And I want you to notice that there is a strong statement that is repeated many times when you read from the book of Deuteronomy up to the book of Joshua. And I wanted to look at the first verse, and that is in Deuteronomy 31.7. Now look at this. This is the word says, Then Moses summoned and said to him, In the sight of all people. Who is this? Joshua. Moses was talking to Joshua, and he said, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with his people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them. And so Moses said to Joshua, Be strong. So Moses said, Joshua, if you are going to win battles, the first thing you've got to do is what? You've got to be strong. Next verse. 31.7 or 31.23. And the Lord commissioned Joshua, 
the son of Nun, and said, What? Be strong and courageous, for you shall bring the people of Israel into the land that I swore to give them. Who's talking to Joshua now? It is not only Moses, but now it's the Lord talking to Joshua. So the Lord said, well, this is now me talking to you if you are going to conquer the land and defeat your enemies, if you are going to lead the people around you to do something great for God. The first thing you've got to do is what? You've got to be strong. And then... When you get to the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Here's that word again. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause these people to inherit the land, and I swore to their fathers to give. Another verse, Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. How many times that was repeated? Every verse we read has that word. Do you notice it? Now, how many of you understand that when somebody repeats a statement of you to you, that somebody wants to hear it, wants you to hear it and understand it fully. I am a father. I have two kids. And when I see something that is not right, I would call their attention and say, listen. Listen. The next time, I will call their attention again. I will say, Listen, did they get the message? Yeah, dad says, don't do this. Dad says, this is what we are going to do because this is good. Now, when it is God who speaks to you, it means it's important. Amen? Amen. And when he speaks through his word twice, it is like talking to you, not with his mere voice, but with a megaphone. And when he talks to you three times over and over again, he is talking to you using a full blast of digital sound system, just like what I have today, uh, to make you aware or wake you up and wants you to listen and be attentive and understand him. How important it is for us to be strong. God says it over and over again to Joshua. And if you want to be an overcomer, you've got to be what? Strong. Look at this verse. Joshua 1, 17 to 18. He says, just we, as we obeyed Moses in all things, so we will obey you. Only be strong and courageous, the people of Israel, as Joshua was encouraged by God, as Joshua was encouraged by Moses, the people of Israel returned to him and said, yes, we are going to obey just how we obey Moses. Only you have to be strong and courageous. Yes, people will say, we will follow you. But we will only follow you when you are strong. Yes, we will believe what you say. But we will act on what you say when we say, see you acting on what you just shared to me. That means don't just talk, but walk your talk. Walk your talk. You want us, I want to see people's life change? Walk your talk. Amen. You want people to be attractive by your life? Walk your talk. Do not talk your talk, but not walking on it. 
Amen. Do you see it? You see what God wants us to learn even this morning? So we will follow only somebody. Who are those people that will follow to, to, to somebody that is leading? Them who are valiant and strong. Which you will find that out, you know, in that verse. So we need to be strong. What would I say this morning? See, holy ground, we need to be strong. If we want to change in our society, if we want change to, to, in our society to happen. Ministry leaders, we have to be strong. If we want people to follow us. Amen. I am talking to myself. I am talking to all ministry leaders. I am talking to those people who have the, their audiences, you know, of sharing the word of God. I am talking to all of us because we know that God has placed us in communities where we can be used for him. I believe that God will send revival and, say, or, and, and, and we will see transformation in people's lives before us if we are strong. Now, there are three things why we have to be strong. And I'm going to share to you these three things. Three things why we need to be strong. First one, we need to be strong because there are battles. How many of you are aware now that you have battles every day? Oh, I th I'm thankful to those who are silent. I think you don't have battles in your life. <laughs> but me, for 37 years in the ministry, every day is a battle. Even I battle with my wife. <laughs> right? Let's be honest. I battle with my children. I battle with my own mind what to do. To rebuke the things that are not pleasing before God. I battle every day. So the first thing why we need to be strong because there are what? Battles. We battle with our own flesh. The enemy wants to take you out in your own self. In your own heart, in your own soul, in your own spirit, in your own, in your world. So we need to be strong. We need to be strong because we are in a battle with the forces of evil. The Apostle Paul said, we are in a battle because we are living in a world full of sin. We are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against forces in the air. The second one, we need to be strong because strength is the key to victory. Ooh, if you're awake, ha, I don't know if you will see victory every day. That's why we need to be strong. We need the strength because, uh, be, because strength is the key to victory. You know, without strength, what? There is no victory. So we got to be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Let it be your desire and your prayer to God saying, Lord, I want you to make me strong this year. To face every obstacles and darts of the enemy that will be thrown in me. And God will grant to you that desire. Because he knows that without his strength in your life, you cannot have victory. So you need to be strong in the power of his might. Amen. Every day. You see, if Joshua was not strong, he and his army would not have victory. Amen. So strength is very important in our walk with God. Because when we face our battles, we will be strong. And when we are strong in the power of his might, then we will have victory. Believe this church. Look at this statement. Your strength in the power of his might has ramifications and consequences beyond what you can imagine. It's going to takod takod sa mga tao. <laughs> your strength, you know, do you 
see people who are jolly good fellow? You want to be with them. Why? There's something in them, amen? What's their strength? They are happy even though inside they're sad. They have joy even though they went through a circumstances that they cannot even control. There is that strength inside and your strength in the power of his might has ramification and consequences beyond what you can imagine. The third thing, we need to be strong because what? Our strength affects other people's lives. Our strength affects other people's lives. Your strength is the key to, others, to other people's victory and not just on your own. You know, I have somebody who came here during the VBS and Tata, you know, have seen him. And he said to, ta to Tata, do you, know, do you know somebody that could pray for me? And so what Tata did is he went inside and when he saw me, he said, Pastor, may tao doon gusto, gusto, manana, gusto, gusto niyang ipapanalangin. So I talked to the guy. Talked to him. For several minutes and he said, Pastor, is it sin to take my own life? I was astounded. Oh my, this guy is suicidal. So I talked to him about the word of God. You know how the word of God loves even from the beginning. You were created fearfully and wonderfully before the Lord of God and before the Lord. And you are a wonderful person that God has created. I said, your life is special before God. Whatever your situation today, I want you to look up to God because the devil will tell you that you're a failure, but God says, you are special to me. We invited him. In other words, you know, I prayed for him. Nahimasmasan ang tao. You know what's nahimasmasan? He got a big relief in his life. And I said, if you would come next Sunday... I am going to welcome you. Well, the first one to welcome you. Unfortunately, I was here on stage and he came over last Sunday. And so I think Tata saw him. You know, he welcomed him. He was one of those I let them stand the first time. Right on this side. But he told me after that, Pastor, thank you so much for your prayer. It was a big relief. And I want us to pray for that guy. One day he's coming back. Because the seed has been planted in his heart. The seed has been planted in his heart. See, your strength affects other people's lives. How do you get strong? There are three ways that I will give to you this Sunday. And I will make this a series, you know, of this particular uh, sermon entitled The Heart of an Overcomer. But the first thing that you need to do, three ways, you know, that... How to get us strong. The first one is continue growing in the spiritual principles. What do we mean by that? Continue on learning. Grow in your knowledge of God. Be at church services and in church prayer meetings and in your life groups, fellowship, discipleship training. Be there in the men's ministry fellowship. Be there in the women's ministry fellowship. Be there in the youth ministry fellowship. Do not ever say to yourself, I have enough strength I got, I got from the sermon last Sunday. So I do not need to attend this coming Sunday. Do not succumb to the type of, the, to the type of mentality. Do not be a victim to the patterns of I have enough. I have enough of the word of God. I have enough teaching. I heard I have enough fellowship with God's people. I have enough prayer time because you need to grow more in his knowledge. That knowledge of spiritual principles. Look at Proverbs 24, 5. The word says, can we all read this together? The wise are mightier than the strong. And those with knowledge, what? Grow stronger and stronger. Wow. What does that mean? The mightiest people, person in this room is not somebody 
who can lift or carry a dead weight of 400 pounds. No. What the word says is that the word of God says those with knowledge grow what? Stronger and stronger. So the more knowledge you get from God, the stronger you get. The more you hear God's word and apply them in your life, the more you spend time in his word and in his presence, the stronger you become. That is why we have church services, we have prayer meetings, we have life groups, discipleship, and even personal devotion where we can learn from the word and spend time with the Lord. Where we can get strength to become stronger every day. So church, listen. We need to fill our minds with the knowledge of God and spend time in His presence. More spiritual principles regularly to become stronger and stronger. Amen. The second one. Live in God's word and be led by His word. Joshua 1.8, look at the word of God. The book, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. I underline those things, you know, that are important. The word says, you shall not... Uh, the word of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. What is the consequence if you are going to do that? At the last portion of the verse, it says, what? For then you will make your way. Again. Louder. Amen. And then you will have. You want to prosper and to be successful? You need God to go before you. What did God say to Joshua? You need to be thinking about the word of God. You have to meditate day and night. You need to consider the word of God. You cannot meditate on, on the word of God without, uh, without reading it. You cannot consider the word of God without meditating on it. God said to Joshua, this word shall not depart from your mouth, but meditate on it day and night. And so when you do that, God will say to all of us or to you, just see what I will do and what will happen to your life. Because the promise is this, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. We're looking, finding things, how to prosper, how to make our future. Yes, everything you are laboring is good but you know what you start it right you start it right where do you want to start it right do not let the book of the law depart from you and meditate upon it day and night this morning as you hear me preaching Maybe the Lord will speak to you and one word will stand out and one verse will stand out over, over your thoughts and the Holy Spirit will tell you that word is for you. That's the answer of your request. That verse will give you guidance of what you are going to do. Meditate on it. It will inspire you. It will strengthen you and it will lead you to find the answers on what you were asking for. The Lord will tell you, the Spirit of God will tell you, take it, live by it, embrace it, and believe it. Amen. Amen. If you want God to give you prosperity and make, successful, and make you successful in life, in all you do, you've got to live in God's word and be led by his word. And believing the word, embracing the word, will make you a great overcomer for God. Number three. Oh. Come on. There you go. Give glory to God. Amen. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. Can we raise, your, can we raise our hands this morning? And Lord, thank you so much. Come on. Thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, 
When you recognize the greatness of God, when you praise God, when you give glory to Him, all of these expressions will strengthen your faith. Have you discovered that? I discovered this many times when I'm irritated at the road because of the traffic and because of people cutting you, I just want to sing and say, God, thank you for giving to the Lord. <laughs> and you know what? Those mindset of being frustrated and sometimes, you know, the temper rises up, it slows down. And I continue to praise the Lord. And later on, I'll be smiling in the midst of the traffic. Have you discovered that? See, when you recognize the greatness of God, when you praise God, when you give him the glory, strength will come to you. In Sunday services, as we worship as the worship time starts and the worship leader admonishes us to sing, my encouragement is that go ahead and worship as you sing. Do not treat those beginning songs as preliminary or something to perk you up, to focus your minds, or just a song to sing while waiting for the rest of the people to come. You know why? Because as you participate in singing, and you think of the lyrics of the song, you go along as you admonished by as you have been admonished by the songs, bless the Lord of oh my soul and all that is within me, then bless the Lord and praise him. And as you give attention to what it says, you will begin to sing it with understanding. You will bless him from your heart. You will be lifted up. Your faith is built up and you are strengthened. You will be stronger and stronger as you sing the next song and the next song. And you will be experience, experiencing his presence very real in your life at that moment. And you will find yourself being strengthened. Amen. That's why every song is exciting. Hallelujah. Ah, come on. <laughs> That's not excitement. Every song is very exciting. Why? Because our mindset says when I praise him, he is going to come and gives me the strength. Hallelujah. Amen. I have five minutes more. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is why you would not miss a minute in every service. And this is a challenge. Before 9.45, we should be here. And everybody is silent. <laughs> Before 9.45 a.m., we should be here. At the start, when the worship leaders, you know, challenge us to sing, we are ready to praise and give him the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but church, giving glory to God is not just participating in giving him glory during worship time. But it involves more than that. As you worship God in the service, it involves you believing that God is God and he can do impossible things as he said in his word. Even things that you have not seen before. Believing he can do the impossible and praising and glorifying him even before you see the answer unfold before you. You get the point? See? A person can thank God easily after he sees that he has done it and God answered his prayer. But it is those who have the heart of an overcomer that can praise and give him glory even before the answer takes place. I preach one here and give you an illustration about mercy and sickness. And we were worried because it might be a malignant cancer. But when that dawned in my mind, you know, the Lord just encouraged me, be still and know 
that I am God. That's the only promise I hold on. Be still and know that I am God. And so what I did, guess you determine what I do. <laughs> I began to praise the Lord. Every morning I praise God. You know, I sing. I don't have my piano before. I have my guitar. I sing with my guitar. I praise the Lord, you know, and my spirit is uplifted and I am encouraged to go on and not to worry about her situation. And to cut the long story longer or shorter, the impossible things happen. God answered our prayer. And she was completely healed. See what it can do when you give God the glory, when you worship, when you praise Him. Even before seeing what God will do to you. Because that is moving by faith. That is you moving in faith that God is going to do the things that are impossible before your eyes. You begin to praise Him and He is going to do it. I want us to look at this verse because this verse is very encouraging. Come on. Okay, there you go. See, this is, this is about Moses. Oh, no, no, Moses. Abraham. <laughs> and look at the verse. Can we read this together? Is it okay? I want your participation now. Okay, Romans 4, 18, 21. In the message it says, everybody go. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed. Anyway, let's, let's stop here. What does it say? When everything is hopeless, what? Abraham believed anyway. Deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw, he couldn't do, but on what God said, he would do. See, when you have a heart like Abraham that believes anyway, even though you have not seen the answer yet, you are still in the middle of your impossible situation. It may be healing, it may be a career, it may be a provision or anything else. The word says, if you believe anyway, praising God, giving him the glory, people, you are on the right road to your victory. Hallelujah. When you see that there is no other way for healing, for provision, for securing a job except from God's ability, then he will make a way for you when there seems to be no way and you believe in him and trust in him within, you are on your way to victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And here is Abraham past the ability to produce a family. He did not question God's promise. No reason out that he does not have the ability to father a son. But he did not focus on his own impotence. But this is what the word of God says. And look at verse 20. Abraham didn't focus on his own impotence and say it's hopeless. This hundred year old body could never father a child. The next one, nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. Ha. Abraham was the heart of an overcomer. He never gave up. Look at the next. Because this is getting exciting. Look. Shall we all read this together? He didn't tiptoe. Around God's promise, asking consciously a skeptical question. What are skeptical questions? What are those? Asking cautiously. Ah, Lord, you said she's going to bear a son. I know you, Lord, but it's impossible. I don't think it's possible, God. Have you asked those questions? Cautiously, skeptical questions? Ah, I don't believe. Lord, forgive me, but I am not sold out. I don't believe that I could lead the men's ministry. 
I don't believe that I can inspire the women's ministry or the sunshine group. I could not even ride or drive in the highway just over the streets. <laughs> but yet you know that God is already using you and he will use you more as you follow him even though you do not understand but believe him anyway. Believe him anyway. What's the next? What did Abraham do? Everybody read it. He plunged into the promise and came up strong. What is the word plunge? Ning dai bahala nang mabaw ang tubig. Even though I'm doubting what, I will believe, Lord, because you said it. I am going to do it because it's your word. Even though I have not seen it, how beneficial it is for me. He plunged into the promise. And what happened? And came up what? Strong. Hallelujah. Like Samson probably. Ready for God. Sure that God would make good on what had he said. And in the ESV version, this is how it is translated. In the ESV it says, He grow strong in the faith as he give glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. He gets stronger as he give glory to God. Hallelujah. That is what it means to give glory to God. And that is what will give you strength and make you strong in your faith. That will move you from wavering to be strong in the Lord. Give him the glory, even if you are not seeing the answer yet. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You have a bright future for us as believers. I want you to bow down your heads and believe with me. God, you have, he you have let us hear your word and we hear it clearly this morning. Help us, so oh God, to develop that heart, a heart of an overcomer. Help me, Lord, to be a living testimony of how good you are. Help me as an ambassador to my co-workers, to my workplace, to my schools, to my classmates, even to my own family. Help me, Heavenly Father. Strengthen me. Make me strong. Hallelujah.